My name is Katherine Ramos and I am um, making a presentation on corruption in, pu in public administration in the United States. Um, this is for Introduction to Public Administration um, for Professor, Professor Richard Wirch. Um, I believe the reason I'm making I, this presentation is about corruption in the public administration field is because I believe it's one of the biggest problems the United States is encountering. Um, but it's also because I have a personal interest in becoming part of the public administration in the future. Like, I aspire to be a lawyer in the next few years. I also aspire in the future to do something with politics as that is my current major um i would love to work in washington and i would love to be part of the supreme court one day so i believe honesty is one of the major issues and it you know i'd love to be an honest politician one day um my first slide is um about the problems and the background of corruption. So corruption means uh, doing something dishonest or an illegal, like committing commi uh, illegal behavior. It's usually done by powerful people, like such as the government officials, of course, or police officers. Um, corruption is done in, you know, obviously everywhere, but it's done in all three branches of government. Um, the United States government is encountering many, many, many uh, of their powerful officials or even lower level public administrators committing many corruption, you know, committing a lot of corruption with money or just many other things. Um, nobody understands how much this is affecting the, um, you know, the American economy and the American society. It is a huge issue and it's been happening for decades. Um, there is no proof that corruption has been going on, how long corruption has been going on in the U.S. government, because it is a secretive type of act, but um, it is one of the major, major, major issues in the, in the government. Um, so my next slide is about the levels of bureaucratic power. Power, So that means um, the levels of bureaucracy or the levels of bureaucratic power, power are obviously the federal, the state, and local governments. Um, corruption in the public administration fields does occur in all three fields, in all three, like, different bureaucracies. So... People think when we talk about corruption in the public administration fields, they think that it's only the federal um, officials making these crimes, when in reality, it's everyone. And this is where it gets tricky. This is where it's so hard to um, connect all the dots and figure out who it is that is making these corruption crimes in the government. Um, many corruptions and negotiations in the local and state government include... Um, prisons or jails for example some of these like state or local administrators such as police officers or correction officers or even like mayors or anything like that um they negotiate with you know whoever it is judges or police officers or even the prisoners themselves on deals um you know for money and it's sad that it's for money um because, you know, like, you'd think, oh, you'd think you'd value, you'd think these people value their job, and it, it's, they think they'd find it honorary to what their position is, but evidently not, and that is the sad part. They're not thinking about the country anymore. They're thinking about themselves. Um, corruption also occurs in all three levels of government when someone wants benefits or when someone wants a raise or when someone is a you know like people think ahead people think about their future and a lot of, like lately in the last few years or in the last decade I should I should say um a lot of like 
governors or like high officials and like cabinets and stuff like that in the state, federal, and local levels have committed crimes or like, for example, making policies, um, making policy public policies to their liking or to certain companies' likings, which and then they make a deal. So if someone does a policy to the liking of a certain company or a certain person, they are promised something in the future. And there is um there is an occasion that I believe it was a, the governor of Louisiana or Texas, I can't remember correctly, but um they made a deal that they made a certain like pharmaceutical policy um to the pharmaceutical company's liking and in return this person was promised to be the president of the company in the future when they retired from government. So these are the kind of crimes that happens, and it's absolutely sad. Um, so then my next slide is about administrative law. Um, so administrative law is obviously the set of laws or rules that regulate the operations of government and which agency, many agencies abide by. Um, there isn't a specific administrative law on anti-corruption, um, in the public sector, which is kind of sad, but since 1977, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act be was established. So, although there isn't a whole lot to say about what kind of administrative laws are in place for anti-corruption in the public administration field or the background of corruption in the administration field, because it has happened so many times and it's hard to keep track of, um, there is a anti-corruption act that is for the U.S. and just our foreign policies, anti-corruption. It's for anti-corruption. Um, anti-corruption laws, I believe, need to come part of the administrative laws um, because, you know, it's part of the administration. These are the people committing these, these crimes, you know, and the administrative laws apply to them, and this is where it should be applied so they can enforce it. <clears throat> So my next slide is ethics, the ethics of, you know, what is all the problems that corruption is causing ethically? So ethics is a discipline with what is good, you know, dealing with what is good and bad, and it has to do with your morals and your obligations. So corruption in the public sector causes so many unethical issues, like mistrust from people, and, you know, you're there to serve the people. Um, you're not there for yourself. I mean, yes, it's satisfactory be, to be part of government and, you know, there's problems everywhere, but you, your, your main, your main job when you're part of government is you're there to serve the people of the United States. Um, ethical problems in the public administration field, um, have caused corruption. They, people abuse their power or their position for their own benefits. And this is what, you know, what we're dealing with. Accountability and, like, people, like, little things drag people's attentions. And that's what we need to be careful on. Like, uh, there needs to be more, like, ethical, you know, ethical classes or accountability classes to help these kind of issues, to help cor stop corruption. Um, corruption is a horrible thing. It has destroyed the government, and it can destroy the government even more. It's sad. Uh, the negotiating and bargaining process is my following slide. Um, and the negotiating and bargaining process usually occurs in an employee and employer relationship. Usually. Um, that's the way most people look at it. Um, and it's usually like collective bargaining, or it just depends. Um, and sometimes it's when creating a contract or something for the future. Um, powerful administrators abuse their powers because of briberies, obviously, and especially in the negotiating and bargaining process. Um, someone asks for something because they know someone is capable of doing it because of their powers, and they go ahead and do these things, especially legislatures or policymakers. They, they do not care. They don't make like these are the people deteriorating our government because they spent money on stuff that doesn't be spent on and they spend it on themselves obviously when it should be spent for more programs for the for the people 
Okay, so the way I believe it should be issued, the corruption should be addressed by public policy is corruption in the public administration field is something hard to fight, obviously, and policymakers and presidential administrations need to help fight it. It will, The more people, the more, we need to lead by example, especially our presidents. You know, as long as they pay attention to the corruption that's going on, and as long as they are anti-corruption and get the word out and help, you know, m- to make America aware and to make their citizens aware that they are trying to find a solution to get all these government officials that are committing corruption out of there. Um, there is this quote that I want to, you know, end my presentation with, and I found it on a on governing.com. And it's, there's a recognition that high profile cases of corruption and mismanagement can color public perceptions of the legitimacy and quality of government action. To that end, improving the ethical behavior of a government employees is fundamental to the le- legitimacy of democratic governance. So many people don't aren't believing gov- what the government is doing anymore because there has been so much corruption, so many promises broken, and we need to stop that. America needs to stop that.